It's been nearly six months, and now we're seeing exactly how Donald Trump's tax law is helping wealthy shareholders and corporate executives. Republicans promised us over and over again that this tax plan would benefit middle class families. They broke that promise in spectacular fashion. The new Trump tax code cuts the tax rate for corporations from 35% to just 21. That's a 40% cut, and it's worth about $1.4 trillion over the next 10 years for the wealthiest companies. And get this, as part of that same plan, a person making $40,000 is now going to be in a higher tax bracket than the biggest and richest corporations in the world. So how does that help working families? It doesn't. It gives 83% of the benefits to the top wealthiest 1%. Now, Trump and congressional Republicans say that corporations are using their enormous tax winnings to invest in the future or hire more people or boost worker wages. The reality is, they're not. Instead, wealthy corporations like Amgen, Visa, and Comcast are spending their money on something called stock buybacks. These companies are using cash to buy shares of their own stock in order to quickly inflate their stock price. Basically, this just lines the pockets of shareholders and top corporate executives. Stock buybacks do nothing to increase wages, create jobs, or spur investment in the economy. And guess what? Stock buybacks, after the tax bill, are at an all-time high, already reaching over $400 billion this year. Some analysts are predicting that number will be close to $1 trillion by the close of 2018. That's a crazy amount. These buybacks have outpaced worker bonuses and wage increases 50 to 1. So corporations are essentially just funneling their tax windfall directly into the bank accounts of their wealthy owners. Pharmaceutical companies have announced more than $45 billion in stock buybacks, but they're not lowering drug prices. Instead, they're cutting back on research. Big banks got a huge windfall, but they're raising borrowing costs and banking fees. Perhaps most shocking, Companies like AT&T, Walmart, and Wells Fargo have announced layoffs, all while benefiting from the Republican tax plan. All indications are that they are now just getting started. The new lower corporate tax rates, combined with a bunch of other tax cuts aimed at the wealthy, means that the ultra-rich will now have even more incentive to grab as much profit for themselves as they can. Far from trickling down and helping ordinary families, the new Trump tax law means that money and wealth are going to stick like glue to the very top. But more importantly, he also decided to eliminate $7 billion in subsidy payments to insurance companies. Subsidies which help offset healthcare expenses for around 7 million Americans and reduce premiums for many more. And the results of that could be severe. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office has estimated ending these subsidies will push up premiums by about 20% in 2018 and actually add $200 billion to the deficit over 10 years. Yes, Trump's plan is going to make insurance more expensive and lose the federal government more money. It's a strategy that you can read about in his book, The Art of Being Bad at Stuff, parentheses, including book titling, no end parentheses. And, and that kind of connection there is something that anyone in their right mind would want to immediately and repeatedly disavow. And it's not like Trump wasn't given the opportunity. Watch what happened at the end of his speech. Thank you, everyone. Mr. President, how do you respond to white nationalists who say they're participating in Trump's vote because they support you? They'd like me to sign the bill here instead of outside, so I think we'll do that. Okay? Thank you. You know, for a second there, as he came back to the podium, I almost thought, well, maybe he's about to say the right thing. But of course not. He had one last shot before the buzzer on the racism clock hit zero, and he threw an air ball so far away it landed in the Third Reich. But, but the journalist who wrote that story stood by, expecting that Trump said this in front of eight or nine people, which is actually a pretty brilliant way to get Trump to confirm it. Estimate the size of his crowd and just wait for him to correct you. Oh, no, I didn't call the White House a dump in front of eight or nine people. I said it in front of hundreds of thousands of people, and all of them were tens, and all of them loved it. And the next day, everyone called me and told me that no one had ever done a better job of calling the White House a dump. Nobody had done it. I'm sat inside. But all this, 
All this serves to distract from the really important business going down in Washington this week concerning the Senate's new Obamacare replacement bill, the Better Care Reconciliation Act. It was released on Thursday ahead of a likely vote next week, and it was quickly denounced by many Democrats. Barack Obama took to Facebook uh, to say it would raise costs, reduce coverage, roll back protections, and ruin Medicaid as we know it. And you know what? Obviously, Obama objects to repealing the ACA. His parents literally named him after Obamacare. Of course <laughs> he would say that. So put that aside. Perhaps the issue Pence is most associated with is his hostility to LGBT rights. And it is not just me saying that. His boss seems to think so too. The New Yorker, citing a campaign staffer, reports that behind closed doors, Trump had a habit of mocking Vice President Mike Pence's religiosity. When the conversation turned to gay rights, Trump motioned towards Pence and joked, don't ask that guy. He wants to hang them all. And look, look, Trump is clearly joking about that, but it is also the kind of punchline that only works if we all know the premise behind it to be true, like jokes about terrible airline food, or bad breakups, or how people from Toronto are terrified of hard-boiled eggs. They're jokes based on universal knowledge we all agree on. Like most currencies, the fundamental reason that Bitcoin has value is because people agree that it has value. In fact, at the moment, it's really being treated more like a speculative investment than a currency. Think of it like Beanie Babies. Why is this Beanie Baby currently being offered for sale on Etsy at a price of $15,000? Well, because its owner thinks that someone will pay that for it. And you know what? That owner was absolutely right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just bought this at a yard sale for $10,000. I'm not a complete idiot. Meanwhile, th there was also a development regarding the repeal of Obamacare, which, remember, was a signature goal for Donald Trump's presidency, along with, presumably, passing comprehensive pro-daughter dating legislation and getting to second base with a truck. Well, well, this week, the repeal ran aground in spectacular fashion. The GOP drive to repeal Obamacare fell apart at 1.29 a.m. Eastern Time. Mr. McCain. When Arizona Senator John McCain flashed a thumbs down, drawing gasps and some applause from Democrats. Wow. I haven't seen a group of senators break into spontaneous applause like that since every time Ted Cruz leaves a room. Oh, he's going. Fuck that guy. And back, back then, back then, in the more innocent time of Monday, it felt like there simply could not be a bigger story than that. This is the most serious charge ever made against a sitting president. Let's not minimize it. Comey is in the waste base, uh, ba basket of history. Everything else is off the table. This is the most serious charge ever made against a sitting president of the United States. Yeah, it turns out Alan Dershowitz was extremely wrong about that. And, and I, I would say it's hard to imagine him being more wrong about anything, but fortunately, we have photographic proof. But the point is, this is gratuitous in so many ways. The guidelines had already been suspended last summer, and there's a Supreme Court case that may settle many of these issues, on top of which all the guidelines recommended was that students be called by their preferred name and pronoun, be allowed to use the restrooms and locker rooms consistent with their gender identity, and, regardless of gender, be able to wear a tux to prom or a dress in yearbook photos, which is a good rule. If the government wants to address an actual problem with yearbooks, maybe ban quotes by Dave Matthews. Oh, really, Dylan? You've got so much to say. Evidence is stacking up to the contrary. With the pace of chaos raining down upon us, it is important to find something to censor yourself. Now, personally, I've been using this framed photograph of Eddie, the dog from the TV show Frasier. I, I look at this whenever I want to feel better, and I'll tell you why. Because Eddie is the perfect example of something that has absolutely no idea what's going on in the world right now. He's a dog, he's fictional, and he's almost certainly dead. And at various times these past few weeks, I have been genuinely jealous of all three of those things. And, and look, look, it is good that the government is getting funded, and there was hurricane relief attached to this bill, but nobody seems exactly sure why Trump made this decision. One senior Republican aide told Politico it was mystifying, adding, maybe it's about the wall, I don't know, none of it makes any sense. <laughs> Which really should have been the slogan of Trump's presidential campaign. <laughs> maybe it's about the wall, I don't know, none of it makes any sense. But, but Trump, 
didn't just clarify who advised him to buy a Kobe, and quick recap, it was a mirror. He also, he also indicated one reason why he did it. And in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made up story. It's an excuse by the Democrats for having lost an election that they should have won. What are you doing? <laughs> I was thinking of the Russia investigation when I fired Comey is the one thing that you are not supposed to say out loud. It is the kind of response that makes you ask three questions. One, can he really be this stupid? Two, does he really think we as a country are this stupid? And three, are we as a country this stupid? And it's entirely possible the answers to all three questions are yes. And look, look, let's, let's all admit it is also better to have a dinner alone with Trump then have Jared Kushner there too. <laughs> Just staring at you silently with his creepy dead eyes. Oh, is that you, Jared? I thought you were a painting of an orphan from the Great Depression. <laughs> but, but the truth is, the most tantalizing moments may turn out to be the things that Comey didn't or wasn't able to say, like in this exchange. Do you believe Donald Trump colluded with Russia? It's a question I don't think I should answer um, in an open setting. Yeah, I can't answer that question here, although I have been screaming the word yes into this paper bag for the last four weeks, which I can submit as evidence to the committee if required. I will, however, need to be provided with a new screen bag. But there are some serious questions that need to be answered regarding these airstrikes, which were in retaliation against Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad's apparent use of chemical weapons to target his own people, which is undeniably horrific. But as many have noted, when Assad did the same thing four years ago, Trump's response was significantly different. The attack also a startling about face for President Trump, who has repeatedly argued against military intervention in Syria. Why do we care? Let ISIS and Syria fight. And let Russia, they're in Syria already, mm -hmm. let them fight ISIS. Tweeting repeatedly after the last major chemical attack in Syria four years ago that the United States should stay out of the conflict. Is there anything Trump is doing now where he didn't at one point tweet about doing the opposite? I honestly would not be surprised if in 2011 he tweeted, only a stupid idiot would live in a big white house and sign bills into law. Hashtag sad. Now, and if you're thinking, well, hold on, perhaps the president brought up the cake because he wanted to be extra precise about every single detail. Well, let's rejoin that interview just one minute later. So what happens, as I said, We've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you headed to Syria. Yes, heading toward Syria. I honestly wish she just kept naming places to see if he kept agreeing with her. Headed to Egypt. Yes, headed to Egypt. Headed to Dollywood. Yes, headed to Dollywood. Headed straight for us. Yes, headed straight for us right now. It has been... Almost a year since the UK voted to leave the EU, and the process of doing that began this Wednesday. In accordance with the wishes of the British people, the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union. This is an historic moment from which there can be no turning back. Wow, the electricity in that room is palpable. Even her phrasing is ominous, though. A historic moment from which there can be no turning back could just as easily apply to getting a limp biscuit tattoo <laughs> or the moment after your cult drank their suicide potions. The... So, for now, for now, let's move on. Let's move on to the CIA. My employer. Shit! I wasn't supposed to say that. Oh, fuck, they're going to be so mad with me. The CIA had a difficult week. Tonight, WikiLeaks has a bombshell, publishing these documents, what could be the biggest exposure of U.S. intelligence gathering methods since Edward Snowden's leak. Well, 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 the spy agency has become the spider pawn. And you have to admit there is a certain satisfaction in seeing that. It's akin to going and shitting on the neighborhood dog's lawn. How do you fucking like it? How do you like it now? But all this mystery and secrecy has a real cost. Insurers are deciding whether to be part of the Obamacare exchanges next year, and the current situation is making things difficult. Just listen to a representative from the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. 
it comes down to the biggest problem we have right now is uncertainty. Insurance, I think everybody at this table will agree, insurance hates uncertainty. Yeah, of course insurance companies don't like uncertainty. They like consistency and predictability. This is an industry where a duck has been a company spokesperson for 18 fucking years. <laughs> It gets even better because that lawyer for Eminem's music publisher offered his own deep interpretation of the song. The idea of losing yourself in the moment and not missing opportunities in life is closely associated with the, the guitar rift at the beginning of the song and is why the song appeals to both the public and those who wish to influence the public by using it in advertising. I now want to hear him describe every single iconic rap song in history. <laughs> When the artist juvenile uses his insistent drum pattern, it eloquently underlines his central thesis that the young woman in question appears pleasing to the eye and that he, the singer, would very much appreciate it if she were to back, if you will, that ass up. <laughs> but the most notable thing Putin said this week was when he admitted for the very first time that Russian citizens may have been involved in hacking the US election. Hackers are free-spirited people, like artists. If they wake up in the morning in a good mood, they paint pictures. Same way with hackers. They wake up one morning, read that something is going on in international relations, and if they are patriotically minded, they begin to contribute in their own way, which they feel is right. Oh, sure. Hackers are just artistic types looking for inspiration. They're like an improv troupe who said, all we need is a location to get started, and someone in the audience shouted, inside the email server at the DNC. Too. All right. The point is, the point is, tonight, let's pull back from the daily Trump-induced chaos and take a look at the norms that his presidency has violated, and not the obvious ones, like the fact that he never released his tax returns, or that his own daughter and son-in-law work in the White House, although, admittedly, I am using the word work there so generously that I should be able to deduct it as a charitable donation on my taxes. <laughs> I can't speak to the quality of his rugs, but how the fuck is this guy spending that much on clothing? He looks like he spent, he bought all the suits that he was going to wear for the rest of his life on one day in 1982 with a cashier's check for $900. And when journalists tried to find out where he got his clothes from and called a number of high-end boutiques, they got either denials or no comments from Canali, Isia, uh, House of Bijan, Xenia and Brioni, which is a little surprising because what brand would not want as its public face? A man who looks like an extra from a director DVD mobster movie who fell asleep in a tanning bed. <laughs> but, but if I may quote the TSA agent assigned to inspect Mariah Carey's carry-on, let's set aside the $1.3 million in clothes for just a minute. And look, jurors in Tribble's case were actually told there was one chance in 10 million that it could be someone else's hair. And guess what? He was exonerated. Because once DNA analysis became available, his lawyer tested the 13 hairs from the case. And not only were none of them his, some of what they found was incredible. Nine of the hairs had come from the same source, a couple had come from different sources, and one was a dog. Two different FBI agents who had uh, looked at that and analyzed it didn't recognize that it was dog hair? It was a canine. It was a domestic dog, yes. My personal conclusion was the dog committed the crime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first, it is amazing that he is able to laugh at that. But second, if a dog did commit the crime, there's really no recourse there, because there is actually no law against dogs committing murder. And that's a fact that I learned in Air Bud 9, fuck the police. <laughs> and, so it seems, with the parade of potentially fake weapons, the failed missile test, and the armada that's definitely in an ocean steaming somewhere, it has been a week of confusing messages back and forth. But on Wednesday, we got perhaps the most surprising message of all. The New York Times reports on unusual activity at North Korea's nuclear test site. Images taken Sunday showed a volleyball game being played. It was one of three games. Analysts say the games were probably intended to send a message, but that message is unclear. Yeah. Yeah, it probably is, because volleyball on a nuclear test site is a pretty hard message to get your head around. It's like getting a text that said, hey, you up, eggplant emoji, because I just ate an entire box of graham crackers, gun emoji. I don't know what that means, but I'm pretty sure it can't be good. Now, for now, let's move on to Turkey. 
a country that shares its name with a bird, and not just any bird, the hottest bird. <laughs> Looking good, my friend. Looking good. <laughs> now, meanwhile, commentators who are usually in Trump's corner had a genuinely tough time defending his remarks, and none tougher, perhaps, than Fox News' Melissa Francis. He Melissa? didn't say there were very good people among neo-Nazi protesters. He said there were he very good people that on that. the other side. There are people that were opposed it was clear to the what statues. He was talking about. Look at, look, can I tell you this? I am so uncomfortable having this conversation. And that's what this woman said before this, because I know what's in my heart. And I know that I don't think anyone is different, better, or worse based on the color of their skin. But I feel like there is nothing any of us can say right now without being judged. Well, look, here's, here's a tip. If you're getting emotionally overwhelmed and feeling judged for defending Trump in his Nazi sympathizer phase, stop fucking doing it! It's that simple! No one is making you do it! Also, and I cannot stress this enough, how did you manage to make this about you? That's almost impressive. But for now, let's turn to Alabama. The South's the South. On, on, on December 12th, they are holding a special election for the Senate seat left open by current Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a position that I assume he will be leaving any day now for his regular holiday job. Now, and, and if, I, if I may just point out, Tux, just because a nation is failing doesn't mean it can't produce some amazing people, just as, and I think we all know who Exhibit A for this is, a successful nation can produce some truly failed human beings. Hashtag Tucker. <laughs> Now, Sessions eventually recused himself from investigating anything to do with Russia and the Trump campaign, but that might not be enough. There are now multiple calls for his resignation, the most forceful of which was a damning tweet that read, that's not good enough, you need to resign, posted by the band Smash Mouth. <laughs> and you know what they say, as goes Smash Mouth, so goes about 8,000 people tops. And pro-Western views are particularly pronounced among young people born after the revolution. In fact, a few years back, Thrasher magazine, my favourite skateboard magazine, <laughs> did a story on Iranian skateboarding culture, which has thrived despite one considerable obstacle. Iran is under sanctions right now, and it's really hard for them to import anything from the West. This kind of put the skaters in a position where they were actually forced to figure out a way to make their own boards. We saw one kid skating a board made of solid steel, which is kind of crazy. It's an Iranian skateboard and it's made of metal. <laughs> solid. This is going to last forever. Sick deck, bra. <laughs> although, although, if it was me, I'd, I'd double up on the grip tape on my top sheet so I don't slam when I go sketchy on the nose grind. I, I, I do hope you enjoyed that joke, because it took one of my writers 50 fucking minutes on the skateboarding Wikipedia page to research it. Rehab success rates are often based on self-reported statistics involving them simply calling former clients. And those results can be problematic, as a man who's participated in one of those studies can tell you. They, they call you up and they ask how you're doing. And you just lie. <laughs> I just say, yeah, I'm fine, you know, but yeah, I was drinking. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, it was, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, but I was embarrassed to say, you know, I didn't stay sober. And you can kind of understand that for every reason. It can be hard to admit that you've relapsed, plus it's a phone call, so you'll say whatever it takes to make it end. Because getting sober may be hard, but nothing is harder than an eight-minute phone call with another human being. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. For instance, many high-end rehabs, and troublingly, only 37% of immigrants in these courts have counsel, meaning the majority of them are appearing in front of the judge without a lawyer, and some in particular really need one. Many of the undocumented children that walk into the immigration courthouse don't have an attorney and must represent themselves. There's children from two years old to 17 years old who are appearing by themselves, who are sitting there without a clue about what's happening. That's just clearly ridiculous, because you cannot let a two-year-old be unsupervised in court. You can't even let a two-year-old be unsupervised in a bouncy castle. They're going to come out covered in glitter, holding a broken beer bottle and a dead bird. How did they get them in there? Who knows? The point is, they can't be left alone for a second, and that bird has already been in their mouth. It just has. You have to deal with that reality. And that flowery, vaguely threatening tone is a key feature of NRA TV. Here is another weird example. 
hidden beneath the dense canopy of deciduous trees as a prostitute of sorts. And those who profit by selling her will stop at nothing to exploit her. Sold and promoted for her non-addictive, even medicinal advantages, what lies behind the veil of this seductress is far different than what she first appears to be. She is a harlot, and her name is Mary Jane. I didn't think this was possible, but I think that guy just slut-shamed marijuana. Oh, and don't get me started on mushrooms, those filthy tramps. They'll grow next to any tree at all. Whores with spores, that's what I call them. But this election is coming at a pivotal time for Italy, and the run-up to it has been toxic. Italy is seeing a rise in political violence ahead of its national elections on March 4th. On Thursday, riot-equipped police fired water cannons and tear gas as they clashed with far-left protesters marching against a nearby neo-fascist rally. Over the past month, there have been series of political motivated stabbings and beatings in some Italian cities. It's true. Italy is in turmoil and is dabbling with fascism, and that should worry everyone. Because the last time they did that, they wound up with Mussolini, the, to put it nicely, Turner to Hitler's hooch. But second, one of the early pregnancy options that you won't get at Sunrise Women's Clinic is an abortion. But that can be hard to tell from their vague name and marketing. And that actually happens a lot with CPCs. Take the Centre for Pregnancy Choices in Mississippi. It sounds like a welcoming place. The website even has links labelled Thinking Abortion and Thinking Parenting. And it was founded by a woman named Barbara Beavers, whose very name sounds like that of a sassy mother in a TV show about a family of beavers. It would be called Hot Damn, and it would be absolutely delightful. And I'm sure that when that ferret fan was given the chance to present his side without interruption, he was completely reasonable. David, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, sir. You have in your hands, uh, my notes here say, one ferret is named Master Linus Van Pelt, yep, and the right. other Princess Katie Minimitz. And that's her. Fuck it. I hate to say it, but I think I'm on Giuliani's side. <laughs> I'm on Team Giuliani. It turns out that ferret advocates are a lot like ferrets. I thought I'd like them, then I saw one, and now I'm not so sure. <laughs> it is also desperate people resorting to a desperate measure. And given that, next Sunday, Venezuela is having their presidential election. Tonight, we thought we'd check in on what's been happening there to try and understand how Venezuela got into this mess and how, despite making it even worse, their current president, Nicolas Maduro, seen here absolutely going to town on a nana. <laughs> is almost certainly going to win, despite having the support of only around a fifth of the population. And when Ireland indicated that it planned to change its tax laws, Apple found a new shelter for profits on this island, the Isle of Jersey, a tax haven in the English Channel, which is, again, not technically in the Caribbean. Although, when you really look at it, you can almost mistake it for the Caribbean if you squint a little, drink nine pints of beer, and hold a picture of the Caribbean in front of it. Now,